it really gives that metallic space to the snare and that sounds great honestly i listen to that and i'm like yeah yep that's the one should i have middle part my hair guys hi i'm ash welcome back to the channel and iso exo's album is now officially out filled with absolute slappers and a lot of learning for me especially if you saw this video that came out a few months ago and to be honest it could use a bit of fixing up but the beauty of the present day and age of computer music means yes we can fix all of that so that's what i'm gonna do today and maybe you can take some of the things that i do and apply it to your own music as well so let's go let's get producing so just for reference and just to remember, this is what the original video sounded like. I think the mix overall was a bit bass heavy. So what I did is I went into all of the mid-range bass sounds. Stuff like this Reese here, the Poop Saw, and the 808. And all I did was EQ. I just took either an existing EQ or maybe put a new one in and made a little cut around 100 to 300 hertz. This is the Reese. This one's around 220. These are the gain and the Q settings just to see how wide they are. And I would do this while the other sounds are playing so that I can hear how it's affecting the sound. And I'm not just doing it because I saw a YouTuber do it. The reason I do this is because it lets the sub be beefier without like having to turn up the sub. In fact, I'm actually able to turn it down. In the original song, I think this was at like minus six dB and I'm able to bring it down to minus 10 and it keeps its loudness without overtaking any of these other bases simply because I do this little scoop here and it just blends everything so much nicer together. Going back to the original, the other thing I noticed is uh, uh, on the other end of the spectrum, it's a little bit high end. There's a lot of hiss in it, acting like a cat. And to go and fix that, the main culprits were these rides here. This was a new method of using rides that I got from Crank That, and he would use a literal white noise, but I forgot to actually put an EQ on it. Oops. And so all I did was just take off a little bit from the top. And it, it's just EQ again. Like I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm not downloading a $300 plugin to do it. I'm just using Ableton's stock EQ. A lot of the hissiness also came from the white noise samples and the risers and the impacts and the crowd noise. For these ones, I didn't EQ it because I didn't actually want to get rid of all the high noise information because we kind of need that. So I think all I did was just turn down the volume. I'll be 100% honest with you. And sometimes that's all you got to do when you're mixing because that's what mixing is. Just turning volumes up and down. Also, with any percussive drop like this, I like to have a layer that does transients that matches with the drop rhythm. For this, I use the... And um, to fix up this mix, I just did some additional EQ to it. Another mid-range scoop, but a little bit farther up the spectrum because uh, this isn't a mid-range bass sound. And this scoop is meant to make room for the main lead here. Which you can see I've also done a little scoop as well. Additionally, some surgical EQ. Finally, this guy does surgical EQ. Doing the thing where you pick a band you up the gain, uh, up the cue as well. And then you sweep it until you hear like noise you don't like, then you dial in and then just gain down. That's how I did those. These are the parameters I end up using. As you can see, it's not that big of a gain reduction. It's only like three dB, but keeping the cue high so that it focuses in on that sound. But that was essentially it for the mixing. I just made sure that my lows weren't all bunched up and my highs weren't all bunched up. And that helps give the song a more balanced sound. After doing all my touch-ups,
might be wondering, yo, Ash, how did you even let this happen? Why on earth did you release video with all of those mistakes? And to be fair, I have been putting a lot of energy into getting these videos out as fast as possible, and I definitely need to slow down. But I always live by this saying uh, to not let perfect be the enemy of good. And you might not agree with me on that, but it just means learning to let go of something just because it's not absolutely premium perfect in that moment. And like I'm doing now, you can always come back and fix stuff when you learn something new or you have an epiphany. You're better off continuously creating rather than staying um, behind on something that might not even be better and you're just wasting a bunch of time on it. I don't know. That's just how my brain works. What do you think? Do you have alternative suggestions? Anyway, you might be listening to this and you're like, Ash, you're missing the one big part. And the number one thing I got commented on the how to ISO EXO video. And that's right. I'm talking about the iconic. That's right. Your boy made the ISO EXO snare, baby. And listen, I did this on stream. I had I had the entire stream team with me and nobody f mentioned doing the ISO EXO metal snare. So I don't know who to blame here. This count. This count. Either way, when you first listen to the snare, you definitely hear that metallic sound. And a lot of people might think, oh, maybe you throw some pots and pans down a flight of stairs, but obvious source of the sound comes from that's right chat chat i ain't saying chat i'm not streaming right now so the way i built the snare is but before that really quickly i want to take a minute to talk about today's word of the day and that word is collaboration that's right in today's music industry collaboration is a huge way to gain some new insight on how to make music and meet other musicians but what happens when it's time to release that collaborated song oh gosh that must be tough to do all the different splits and revenue sharing nope not with this video sponsored distro kid they've got a feature called splits and through splits releases with collaborators are mega easy with distro kids splits you can add an unlimited amount of collaborators to any track so even if you are a mega pop star with 12 different songwriters in the room everybody's getting paid in addition to that you can change the splits at any time add or remove collaborators at any time and if a singer happens to leave to chase space aliens you can easily get rid of them or if it's 2023 now and that singer comes back let's go it's super easy to set up and all everybody needs is a distro kid account plus to sweeten the deal since you watch this channel get seven percent off with my vip link down below get those collaborations going and uh back to the video so the way i built the snare is three layers keeping the regular remedy snare 11 like for that trap vibe then finding a sword hit sample. You can find that online or you can sample the game I'm talking about. And the original sample sounded like this. Uh, I built all of this in drum rack. And the cool thing about drum rack is how you can basically use Ableton's sampler. You can do this also uh, working in audio, but that's how my brain enjoys it. The first thing I did was make sure to fade it in because if you're layering with the trap snare, you want to still have that trap snare sound. So by keeping the initial hit of the trap snare and then fading into the sword, combine those together, you're already pretty close to it. However, there are some other things that you can do as well. When I hit controls here, I actually detuned the sample by just a little bit because in its original state, it was a little off key in the song. And especially with a metallic hit, you want to keep it in key with the song or else it'll just sound way too out of place. So this is a really slight detune. Uh, there was a version that I had the detune down even lower where it was actually like fully in key with the song. And then listening to that, I was like, wait, that's a little too in key. It's still got to sound like a drum and not like a synth. So that's the reason why it's uh, minus 14 instead of like fully in key. And then the third layer I added was was kind of like a follow-up just to add a little bit more tech 
texture to the hit itself. I don't even know if like this does anything. You know, you know how like producers are sometimes you put something in and you think it's doing something even though it's probably not. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's what this is doing, but without it with it it has like this tiniest bit of texture that you probably won't even be able to hear but whatever it's in there and that's just a, this sample and i just got these online or like i said just play some sekiro and sample that uh, next thing i did on the main sword hit was ott because i wanted to draw out the metallic sound but i did make a few adjustments to the output knobs making sure to turn down the low end because i want more of the highs and the mids coming through turning time down so that it almost stretches out the sound a little more and my amount's not that high it's only 53 percent because i don't want it fully overly compressed and last thing obviously we gotta have the reverb you know gotta gotta give it a bit of juice and it's a pretty long reverb. It's like a two second reverb, but it just really gives that metallic space to the snare. And that sounds great. Honestly, I listen to that and I'm like, yeah, yep, that's the one. Finally, EQing out the lows because this little bar is here. This is outside of the group. So it's actually EQing all three layers. The cool thing about drum rack is you can do everything inside of it. But it's it's the literally the exact same as building your drums like this, like having three separate tracks, grouping it like that. Just personally, I like having it all in one channel, in one track. But it's up to you. You don't you don't have to do it this way. I'm just showing you how I do it. The last thing I did to make sure to keep the punchiness, especially of the metallic snare, because it's such a centerpiece of the song, is I went back into the side chain and I adjusted it. Um, the side chain used to look more like this, but uh, I brought it like this and I brought it down so that um, you hear more drum before any of the synths come in. That's what this curve basically means. This is volume down and volume back up on the synths. And this happens every time any of the kicks hit and any of the snare hits. That's the side chain compression that's going on. I use this program called Duck. This is so that the drums with the synths uh, stay punchy. And there was actually a little issue here where this, this very first snare wasn't punching through. So I even went as far and I did a second side chain, just doing the volume manually, making it go even quieter, just so we could get that very first metallic snare hit, like punching through. Uh, without it sounded like this and i was like that ain't that ain't good enough for me so put the volume automation in so that it for sure you for sure hear it that's the fixes i made there it is and i don't have a course or anything to sell to you so being able to keep this channel alive comes from all the vips on patreon and from anyone who's downloaded this specific project file so thank you for supporting the channel because of you i can keep doing this and that means to anyone who already bought the project file i've updated it with this version that's right all of the fixes are in here patch notes baby dlc and can we also talk about how inspirational the new iso exo album is like to the point where you follow me on insta and you might have heard this clip <laughs> Let me know if you want this to be released. And if you made it this far, you're a legend. Knock to next. Subscribe. Now go make some bangers. Peace.